going to talk about heart anatomy now. So this is the heart sitting in the thorax of the chest. Um, it's oriented slightly this way, and this is the right ventricle. Okay, right ventricle is the closest, is most closely located to the chest wall. It's the most anterior structure. This is the left ventricle. This must be the right atrium. This is the left atrium. So now we're going to look at the cross section, and this is actually important. This can be very test. This is very testable. They might ask you to identify which part is which. You want to know it's, uh, the location of the heart um, in relation to its surrounding structures. So this is obviously a ventricle. This is the whole heart. Remember which ventricle was this? which ventricle was this? Well, this is the one closest to the chest wall. Which one do we say that was? Remember we said that was the right ventricle. So this must be the atrium. If it's behind the right ventricle, then it must be the right atrium. So then this leaves this one must be the left ventricle, and this is the left atrium. Now I want you to know the clo note the cl close proximity of the left atrium to the esophagus, which is right behind it. Okay. Now that's relevant because your left atrium can become enlarged for various pathological reasons, which we'll, we will discuss later. But if it gets enlarged, you can imagine that it will compress that esophagus. And if you do that, you're going to get um, difficulty swallowing because, again, you have compression of the esophagus. The other thing that can happen is you can have, there's a nerve right around back here. Um, it's called the left recurrent um, pharyngeal nerve, and this is involved for speech, so you can compress that as well. You can get hoarseness. Again, that's if you have uh, expansion in your left atrium, it can lead to problem swallowing and um, hoarseness. Now we're going to look into the heart. We're going to look at the layers. So we t we're taking a cross section here. And I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to look at this. So this is the endocardium. The first layer is the endocardium. Um, it's pretty much the same as always. You get endocardium, then you have a myo, and a peri. So this is the endocardium. It's the layer of the heart. Um, the lines the surface of the heart and its valves. And actually, before I keep going, I want to mention that the layers of the heart are actually important because you can have inflammation of each of these layers, and we'll talk about all of those and uh, what will happen. So we talked about endocardium. Next is the myocardium. This is the muscular layer. Okay, this is the this is the part with all the muscles that's going to squeeze and pump out blood with every heartbeat. Um, all right, and the next is the pericardium. So pericardium has has three layers actually. Okay, so there's um, first layer is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. That's layer here. Then we have a pericardial cavity. So that's not a layer. That's just fluid. Uh, and then next we have the parietal layer of the serous pericardium right here. And finally we have the fe febrous pericardium, that's the third layer. So the pericardium is basically this, the wrapper of the heart. And um, I'm going to talk about the pericardial cavity now. So the serous pericardium is like just like other serous structures, it secretes fluid. And that fluid goes into this pericardial cavity. And why do we need this? We need this fluid because it's going to provide lubrication to the heart. It's going to allow it to pump more easily. Okay? Um, and this is also very important because this can, this can fill up too much and it can cause tamponade, which we'll talk about. Alright, so next is coronary artery anatomy. So we've talked about layers of the heart, we talked about the structure of the heart. Now we're going to talk about the coronary arteries. And there's a couple of key ones that we want to note out. So we have the left main coronary artery down here. Then we have let's change our pen to red. Then that's going to branch out into first the left the left circumflex. That's the lateral wall of the left ventricle, and then the left anterior descending, which goes down the anterior wall of the left ventricle. Now if we look at the right side, we see the right coronary artery here, this is the main branch on the right side, and that's going to split, that can split into the, um, into the posterior descending artery, which is over here. Now 85% of the time, the posterior descending artery does come from the right coronary artery, and in which case that is called a right dominant circulation, okay, 85% of the time. However, this posterior descending artery can also come from this left circumflex artery. That happens 8% of the time. That is a left dominant circulation. Okay, because it comes from the left side, so it's left dominant. Now that's 93% of the time. The remaining 7% of the time, it can actually arise. This posterior descending artery can arise from both the left circumflex and the right coronary artery. And in which case, that would be called a codominant circulation. So right dominant, left dominant, co-dominant. Actually, you actually want to remember those terms. You can get tested on it. So I'm going to talk about the what parts of the heart are innervated, are um, supplied by which of these arteries. And actually, this picture tells us a lot. This is a cross-section of the heart, right ventricle, left ventricle. 
And so this blue is going to point out where the left anterior descending artery supplies. So it supplies the anterior surface of the lateral ventricle, of left ventricle, I'm sorry. It does two-thirds, as you can see here, this is the interventricular septum, and there's two-thirds of that um, septum. And the other thing it does, it does the anterior lateral, lateral papillary muscle. I haven't talked about that yet, but the papillary muscle is involved in um, opening and closing of the mitral valve, which is the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Okay, so now let's look at the left circumflex artery. This is over here. What it does is it innervates the lateral. See, this is the lateral side of the left ventricle. So lateral side of Okay, excuse my writing. And it also does the anterior lateral pap muscle. So now you see that the anterior lateral papillary muscle has innervation from both the left anterior descending as well as the left circumflex artery. So this one, it's a stable papillary muscle. It's, it's not very likely to, um, to get infarcted because it has the, the double supply of blood. And we're gonna contrast that to the posterior medial papillary muscle in a second. Now first we're going to look at the right coronary artery, which is this red stuff. Um, change my pen. Um, so this red stuff here is the right coronary artery. And so you can see that it does all of the, um, does the posterior side of the ventricles, posterior two-thirds of the walls. It does the posterior one-third of the interventricular septum. And it does the, at the AV node, as you can see here. The other thing it does that I have not drawn in here is that it supplies the SA node, the sinoatrial node. So that's the first pacemaker area. Um, the AV node is the second pacemaker area. Um, and then it also supplies the posterior medial papillary artery. Okay. It's all from the posterior descending. So now the posterior medial papillary, um, sorry, muscle. The only blood supply it has is from the, uh, the posterior descending artery. So if you get an infarction there, if you get blockage of that artery, this is going to die. This is relevant. We're going to talk about this in the myocardial infarction lecture. So um, keep this in mind. Um, so in summary, basically, if, if you remember this picture, you remember pretty much everything you need to know about the, the what, what um, artery supplies what part of the heart. Um, the only thing that's not mentioned is this one, the anterior lateral papillary muscles from both the left circumflex and the left anterior descending, and then the posterior medial papillary muscle from the posterior descending artery, and also the sinoatrial node, which is supplied by the right coronary artery. All right, so that's it for our anatomy of the heart.